you, you spoke about how to find a credible supplier. Um, I wanted to also ask you, as far as OA, do you still do some OA or is that kind of just out the window now? Yeah, I, I like to do it, I think, more when I have downtime. Like I'm yeah. working with a, a solid couple of suppliers, a couple of brands. Um, so a lot of my capital is kind of tied up with that. But if I do find OA items that are fast moving and I can really kind of go through my uh, credit, sell it fast, you know, and pay off the credit card, then I'll kind of go into some like OA stuff if I see it. Um, but a lot of my leads that I find, I do have a VA that kind of helps me out with other OA leads that goes to my group as well. Um, but with OA, I kind of do Legos a little bit and that's kind of all I do currently. But oh, Q4, wow. Q4, when it comes around, I'll, I'm going to be like back to 50, 50. Uh, so you're, you're buying and holding right now or you're just still flipping For Legos. Yeah. I kind of hold it until Q4. Um, I kind of did it the wrong way. I bought a little bit too early. But what a lot of people will do is they'll buy during Black Friday on sets that are about to retire, and then they flip it in December. Um, and it might be a smaller margin, but you get rid of it within like two months. It's, 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 what, what's funny is like I accidentally like fell upon just crazy ROI on some Lego sets because I'd buy them during Christmas time and they'd mm -hmm. return it, and the price had tanked. So it just it's just sitting there. I mean, it's, it was returned, but it was still mint condition. So good, and yeah. then like three, like like. By March of last year, I was like, let me just check on this Lego set. And it's like, you know, it's price rocketed. Right. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, this is what Legos there's no, like there's no if you actually invest the correct yeah. ones. And I was buying some one-offs, you know, it wasn't probably like revered as other Lego sets are. Yeah. So, um, and I guess, yeah, in Q4, you'd be a fool not to just do OA, right? There's so much yeah. things on sale and so demand much is just insanely high and an aberration. So. Yeah, yeah, understandably so. I am fearful though of Lego coming in and just wanting to do my yeah. own. Like, <laughs> I think they I think right now they one P it, which means they just sell to Amazon and yeah. Amazon handles it. Right. But Lego could come in and just, you know, you know, uh IP people, but and get on they, the once their stock they run out of stock, it's gone. So they just let people do what they want with it. But um I don't think there's an issue because there isn't an authentics, but if that ever does come about, which could happen in the future, mm -hmm. um, which hopefully it never does, but that, that could happen. So it's um, for now it's great. It's a great way to make money. I know people that even have courses on just Lego stuff, um, yeah. but yeah, if you just focus on the retiring sets that, you know, retire. So for example, it's March of 2024. I want to target sets that retire in December or even the ones that some of them retire in the summer. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of curate a list of like 10 or 20 that I want to focus on, maybe 30. And I cast a wide net because some will do 10% ROI within six months. Some will do 100% ROI within yeah, six yeah. months. So it's good to kind of go wide um, and get maybe 10, 20, 30 of each set um, if you have the capital. I like throwing it on a zero APR card because there's literally no risk and you oh, just yeah. pay the minimums. So that's what I'm doing kind of right now. I'm kind of holding. And luckily, my recent zero APR card had like a 12K limit. So I was able to put a good amount. Um, and then I just throw it in storage. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I was in a group where they would just call out leads of Legos to buy, mm -hmm. you know, what is it called? What, what is it? What is it called? Like kind of like in stocks when they tell you to buy something and hold it for an X amount of time. Um, I looked into it for a little bit, but I guess I just never got too serious with it. Um, so I wanted to kind of, uh, veer into the software that you use. Um, so I, I still mainly do online arbitrage. Uh, I use Profit Protector Pro for my repricing software and then BuyBot Pro for my listing analyzer. Can you briefly go over what you use in OA and wholesale? Yeah. So I've recently switched up a couple of tools. Um, Keepa, obviously, it's right. always going to be Keepa. Um, Jungle Scout I've been using because it, you know, it has the whole profit calculation. It has keyword research as well. Um, Repricer wise, I am using Be Cool as I think I get a little bit higher uh, in terms of sales per month. I'm probably going to switch to Seller Snap. Um, okay. But Be Cool, honestly, I have no issues with Be Cool. I know some people don't use it properly and they complain about it, but I think it's fine. Um, Seller Ramp's still a great tool. I do use it um, in addition with Jungle Scout. But mm -hmm. if I was a brand new user, I would just get, you know, uh, Seller Ramp, Seller Board, right. stuff like that. But um, I'm mainly using Jungle Scout right now because of the whole P PL stuff. But yeah. um, what else? I have a lot of tools. Uh, I have for wholesale, Scale Unlimited. Scale Scale Unlimited. 
uh, you can see I'm repping Carbon Six. Oh, nice. Um, Scan Unlimited, obviously, for all my catalogs, it's just super easy and efficient to use. They have tier systems, so you can start with the lower tier. Um, the more things you have to scan, there's a higher tier for it. And it's a, a, a great tool. You can export all the data, stuff like that. Smart Scout also does similar stuff. They also have a lot. Um, like I said, it's a very diverse tool. So you could do OA research, brand research for wholesale, um, PL stuff, listing creation tools. So this, it's a very, very diverse tool. I really do like Smart Scout as well. Um, 2D Workflow is my current bread and butter for inventory with their optimizations tool that, you know, kind of helping navigate through the hurdles of placement fees. I use that. Um, what else am I missing? Sellerboard, obviously, is my yes. PNL tool, but I use QuickBooks in addition to Sellerboard because it does have a, a um, what is it, integration with it. But yeah. Sellerboard is my go to because that's what my accountant obviously says I should be using for this kind of business. Um, but I think that's everything. I might be missing something. I have a bunch of other Chrome extensions like OS add on and stuff like that. Um, but that should be it, I think. Make sure you get them all in for the brands start getting upset at you for not for not repping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Carbon Six is my go-to, so yeah. I use Seller Investigators. That's obviously my bread and butter with reimbursements. Right. Um, if you're a new seller, don't even waste your time at all just searching through your shipments and trying to upload reimbursements for like small shipments stuff like that. In the beginning, I used to do it, but it's really such a low value task. And you should be committed to looking for suppliers, looking, calling suppliers and doing the tasks that are going to make you the most money and looking for a little nitty gritty type things that save you 10 bucks and it takes you an hour to find it. It's not worth it. Just have Carbon6 do it. Seller investigators will do it. Scan Unlimited, obviously, um, is my bread and butter with scanning. But um, yeah. And then Walmart, I do a little bit of Walmart. So Wally Smarter is my go to for Walmart research. But their API is a little limited. So you can't get a crazy amount of data. So there isn't really lots of like very good tools in terms of like research, but Wally Smarter is a great estimator for everything. You know, you mentioned um, the QuickBooks. I think a lifesaver for me, especially since the business tax deadline was five days ago, I got a bookkeeper who updates my books at the end of every month. And it was like the, for the first time I was able to send to my CPA this like beautiful like Excel nice sheet and, and she was just like, wow, you got a bookkeeper. I was like, hell yeah. Because last year it was a mess, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm still so in that place. I, I, I can't suggest strongly enough to get a bookkeeper. Uh, hello worth it. I mean, you can do it yourself. At least just make sure you're staying on top of it, top, on top of it at the end of every month. So you're not just looking at yeah. all your statements at the end of the year. It makes everything so much easier. Um, also you met the, the shipment, shipment reimbursement softwares are great. I also have, um, I have an admin VA who she, it's kind of a combination. She gets my leads, but also she checks and makes sure yeah. all the reimbursements are handled any shipment discrepancy. So I don't think you should get a VA to that level unless you really start growing your business. And just, I mean, I guess you could just look at how much you're spending on your VA versus what you could be, uh, spending to sell investigators or if you're doing mm -hmm. it yourself, um, yeah. Thank you.